for about 12 years in uh, various different schools um, and held administrative positions and stuff like that too. So I've been here since 2019, kind of worked with John and Ann and the entire team to get this DPT program kicked off and it's been a lot of fun. So really look forward to getting to know every one of you and, and working with you all. All right, Ann, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, hi everybody, um, I'm Ann Wassman. I am, um, I guess I wear two hats, so I'm the clinical affiliation coordinator for the college. I work with all of the um, programs. Um, I coordinate in um, the, all of the clinical parts of it, so I'll be involved with you in the clinical uh, side of that, as well as I support, I do admin support for the three PT programs. Um, so. Um, I work closely with John and with Eric on a lot of items. And um, so, as John said, I am an interesting fact. I'm an avid outdoor person. I love to go camping and um, ride the side by side. So uh, I'm coming to you from uh, the northern Wisconsin area um, in um, a campground there. So I've been with the college about 11 years um, in various different programs. So it gives me a, um, a versatile um, you know, outlook on things to uh, provide administrative support. All right, so I'm gonna, I'll, I'll pick on each of you and I'll just kind of go by what is, what's viewed on my screen. So it's no particular order. Um, so Grant, would you mind introducing yourself oh i just saw it has to be admitted so actually i'm going to move then um let's go to ben crystal why don't you introduce yourself awesome all right so yeah my name is ben crystal i'm currently in green bay but i lived in boulder colorado for six years i went to undergrad out there and uh interesting fact i'm pretty big into rock climbing and i actually work doing some advanced instruction and uh front dat front desk um management at the climbing gym that just opened up in green bay so that's another thing if you guys ever want to go climbing when you're in town and school starts up you can uh, get a group to go out there should be fun yeah and we actually i was we were ben and i were just talking we just had a group of dpt students that are getting trained to do adaptive climbing they just got trained last weekend and they were pretty excited about it so um hannah would you like to introduce yourself hi guys uh can you hear me? I just yep. my Okay, awesome. So my name is Hannah Sullivan. Um, I'm in Oshkosh, Wisconsin right now because I don't have internet at my house because I'm <laughs> way rural. Um, so I'm just going to borrow my nerdy boyfriend's computer stuff, so it's fine. Um, fun fact about me, I just got back from Texas. I just spent almost three weeks there nannying. So I'm back and ready to do this. <laughs> Okay. So it's awesome. Jacob, I'll let you introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm uh, Jacob Lane, and I am from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, actually, and that's where I am right now. And fun fact is I'm actually a Viking fan as well, John, so <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> that's pretty funny. All right, we got another one. Yeah, for sure. Nice. UP, it can go either way, That's a, so that's good to hear. So. All right, uh, Julia, and I'll probably murder your last name, Sucharski. I'll let you uh, go from there. Oh, they're laughing, so I probably murdered. It was it. definitely murdered. <laughs> Saharski. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. It was a fair effort. Yeah. Good try. Um, also, I have Liz Williams here. I see I'm that. Here. Okay. Um, so we're both from Appleton, Green Bay area. Um, fun fact is we are both PTAs. So we're in the field, kind of running around, practicing, and have a good time. That's fantastic, Liz. You wanna? Oh, and I see. Uh, I see. A, I see a third member of your family. Oh, oh you wanna see? We have okay. Reginald. Oh. <laughs> There's my fun fact. <laughs> Love it. My, mine just walked away, so I would grab mine. But all right. Spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. Jules, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, um, bear with me if the audio is really off. Um, I'm currently sitting in the parking lot of my work on my break to hang out with you guys. But um, I'm Jules. Uh, it says Julia on the screen, but I like to go by Jules. Um, I got my bachelor's in sports science at Northern Michigan University, and I have a couple of my classmates that are also in here. So hi, Great. guys. <laughs> um, and then I'm from the Appleton area. 
sorry. I'm from the Appleton area. I went to Kimberly, so I'm just living here with my parents for now until I eventually, again, move up to an apartment in Bellevue. All right. Bailey, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi guys, I'm Bailey. I'm also from the UP of Michigan, Kingsford, Iron Mountain specifically. And an interesting fact about me is I'm going to Colorado for a week on Saturday. Awesome. Great time to go to Colorado. Ben, you got any advice? <laughs> Honestly, anywhere out there is worth worth the trip. Yeah, it's great. All right, uh, Ben Bartletti. Bartletti? And I probably slaughtered that one too. Oh, oh yeah. Great the first time. Um, hi, Ben Bartletti. I'm from Anigo, Wisconsin. Some of you have probably heard where that is unless you grew up in northern Wisconsin. Um, fun fact, diehard Packer fan. Pretty optimistic about Jordan Love, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, thing I like to do is I like to fish a lot. Great. Big angler. All right, cool. All right, Isaac. Uh, hi, guys. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, um, my name is Isaac Shaw. I'm currently living in Madison, Wisconsin, so planning to move in the next uh, couple months here. And fun fact about me is um, not this Saturday, but next Saturday we'll be driving up to Wausau to pick up our new uh, Golden Retriever puppy. Ah, uh, awesome. Great. I have a I have two dogs and I've brought them in to campus a few times at nights to little study buddies kind of thing. So, um, so <laughs> we might have to have a dog date or something with all of us. Yeah. All right. Pete, my my screen keeps moving around. So Kirsten, you want to? Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi. Uh, my name is actually pronounced Shearston. Okay, that's another one I got to write down. <laughs> Um, I am from Kurvitz, Wisconsin, and I went to school, um, undergrad at Northern Michigan with Jules and Bailey, and um, I live out in Bellevue right now, and my fun fact is that I have, I was a cheerleader for like 18 years of my life. Wow. Do you know Alex or Abby, who are our current students from Kurvitz? I know Abby and Jacob. Oh, okay. All right. All right, Jordan. Uh, my name is Jordan Zimmerman. I grew up in Green Bay, Wisconsin, so also a diehard Packer fan and also optimistic about Jordan Love this season. Um, a interesting fact about me is that I started Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu a couple weeks ago, so if oh, any oh, of you guys oh. have any tips, I'm all ears. <laughs> Really cool. That's great. Um, all right. Let me click, I think. Um, OK, we've got Carter. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Carter. Um, right now, I'm living in Sheboygan. Um, then fun fact, um, I also went to NMU. And then uh, right now, I'm teaching uh, one of my um, my many many uh, gigs at the moment, I'm teaching water aerobics at uh, Holy Family in okay. Manitowoc. Great, great. All right, Brianna. Hi, uh, my name is Brianna. Um, I got my bachelor's uh, in exercise science with an emphasis on sports med at Concordia in Mequon, Wisconsin. Um, but right now, uh, I. I'm currently in the UP, um, also in Kingsford. So just okay. like. All right. Brighton. What's going on, everybody? Mm -hmm. I'm Brighton. I'm from Brilliant, Wisconsin. I uh, don't know if anybody other than John knows where that is. I know. Exactly. But uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I did my undergrad at UW Oshkosh. I'm currently living in Appleton. And a fun fact about me is I used to live in Alaska. I did too for a summer, so I didn't know that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's All right. yeah. All right, Claire. Hi, I'm Claire. I'm originally from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Um, I got my undergrad at La Crosse. And fun fact about me is I love to hunt, and I just 
got back from a Canada fly-in fishing trip. Oh, wow. So we got some outdoors people. That's great. All right, Mercedes. I'm Mercedes. I did my undergrad at Eau Claire. And I'm from the Green Bay area. And a fun fact about me is that I'm going to be coming into the semester six days off of a double hip surgery. Oh, OK. All right. So we should. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think right away <laughs> what we're going to have to do to help maybe help you out here, but uh, we'll, we'll work it out. Um, so so good. Well, welcome. All right. And Kasaya. Hi, I'm Kasaya. I'm from uh, Portfield area. Uh, I did my undergrad at UWGB and a fun fact about me, I went skydiving two times. Oh, I have only gone once. <laughs> I do want to go again though. That'd be fun. Maybe we do a, a group skydive trip sometime or something. So, all right. I think I got everybody. If I did not Please, please speak now or forever hold your peace. Hello. <laughs> oh, and who is that? Grant. Oh, Grant, I am so sorry. Oh, because I, I even saw you and I was like, Grant gets bonus points because he's wearing the Bell and College t-shirt. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, I think my, I had like technical issues um, when I first got in, but I'm here okay. now, so. All right. um, I'm Grant. I'm from Sheboygan, Wisconsin. That's where I'm currently living right now. And I got my undergrad in sport and exercise science at Wisconsin Lutheran College in Milwaukee. Yeah. Um, fun fact about me is I'm getting married pretty soon. So congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, I was married in Sheboygan, so <laughs> I oh. used to live there for <laughs> years. So um, uh, near and dear to my heart. So all right, I'm going to ask one more time. Did I miss anyone else? All right, so I just want to double check. You do see the orientation session one PowerPoint slide up on the screen. OK, so um, Dr. Chaconis is going to kick this off and then I'll kind of uh, Anne's going to talk for a little bit and we'll go from there. So um, Eric, if you want to take it away. Yeah, thanks, John. Yeah, it was really enjoyable listening to all of your backgrounds and perspective and your hobbies and stuff. I think uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. There's a lot of a lot of things that I think a lot of us have in common. Um, so I just want to start by saying that you all made uh, the right choice to come to Bellin College. In in my experience and training, literally thousands and thousands of PTs, because I've worked at some pretty big schools that took really large class sizes, multiple classes per year. Um, I have never worked with a group that cares more than our group of faculty. And, and I think it's really important. The thing that makes the, the PT school experience is the culture of the program, the faculty that you work with, your classmates, uh, the administration, the leadership of the college. Do they listen? Do they care? Are they attentive to your needs? Uh, do they create an environment where you can thrive? And that is real. I'm very, very proud to say that is absolutely what we have done. So um, things like the size of the campus and the football team and the facilities don't matter really at all. In the long term, you're going to be happiest and you're going to have the best education and you're going to become the best possible physical therapist based on really those, those things that I listed earlier. So I think that you all have made uh, the right choice. I think that you're going to find that it is, we are like a family. Uh, we, we treat you really like our brothers and sisters and and sons and daughters, and that's kind of the relationship that we like to have. We're going to push you. We need to push you. We have to push you to your to your absolute limit. That's the only way you're going to grow. It's the only way you're going to reach your goals. So sometimes, just like brothers and sisters and sons and daughters and parents, you know, we are going to um, disagree or maybe, you know, have, have these, uh, <clears throat> I guess you could call them, I wouldn't say conflicts, but times of uh, friction, but that's just because we really want the best and we really care. It's so much harder and it's so much more work to push a PT student. It is really easy to sit back and, and kind of be easy and soft and let people pass and create exams that aren't that hard and to have practicals that aren't that hard. That's the easy route. We do not choose to take the easy route. We want to take the hard route because we want what's best for you. And I always think like, would I send my kids to this PT program, you know, and, and, and doing really what's best for them. So what 
That's what helps us sleep at night is that we know we're providing the best possible experience for you and that we're going to get the best possible outcome. Uh, we very, very much care about our reputation. And so our alumni, you, as you go out there and practice what you're able to do and the success that you're going to have is going to obviously reflect on us. And we care very much about that. So I can't tell you enough how excited we are. Um, we The first cohort things are we, we just really, really have enjoyed that group of people. They're a special group and they've created a culture of leadership, of service, of improving the profession and improving the community that we serve. That is what they are all about. And things like creating this uh, clinic in town that we've created now, this new partnership that we have to serve the underserved, help people who can't afford to see a physical therapist. Uh, we're really excited about that. That actually starts, does that next start week. tomorrow, John? Tomorrow? And next week. Next Thursday? And there's already patients uh, scheduled, actually. It's it's going to be awesome. So you all are going to walk right into that. And you're going to really be the ones that take that kind of, you know, get that torch passed down to you. And you're going to take it and take it to the next level and make all these things even better um, than that group already has. So we're, we're really, really excited. Um, we're going to do two online orientation sessions. So tonight, we're going to meet again on July 19th. Try to make that if you can. If you're unable to, we will record it. But it's really nice to see your faces. I can't tell you enough how, how wonderful it is to interact with you like this tonight. Um, we find these orientation sessions leading up to our, our start in August really help us get a lot of the logistical stuff kind of handled so that when you come to campus, you're ready to hit the ground and, and really take off because it's going gonna, it's gonna to go by quick. Um, and then on August 24th, we will have you come to campus. That's the, what is that, John, the Thursday before school starts? Correct. Yep. So that'll be an all-day event. As you can see there, you'll come to campus at 730. It's going to be like rapid fire. You're going to meet every department from the college. You're going to see all the facilities you're going to get uh, fitted for your scrubs, and you're going to get, uh, all, you know, all sorts of, you're going to meet your academic coach. We're going to end that day with a workout. We're going to end that day usually with some type of kickball game or something fun like that. Uh, that's what we did last time. John's team won the kickball game. He's still yep. rubbing that in everybody's face. But um, <laughs> but he's the one that got to pick, like, who was on what team. So I think there was a little <laughs> bit of a – anyway. Uh, uh, that'll be a lot of fun. And then we'll kick off class. will be the first uh, day of class. will be that Monday, August 28th. So you'll come in on Thursday. You get the weekend and then and then come the 28th. Um, try to get everything you can from a life uh, living situation squared away by the, before the 24th. You, once, once you start class on the 28th, it's going to be really, you know, co coming at you. They're going to be busy days and lots of studying and lots of long days. And so there's going to be a lot of work during that time. You'd like to have your living situation and all the logistics and all that kind of sorted out prior to that. You can see the dates there for the subsequent semesters. Uh, we have a nice long break between it around Christmas time every year at the end of December. So from December 8th to January 2nd, I mean, it's like a really, really long break. And then other than that, every other semester, it's about a two week break between semesters. So we do 15 week semesters, trimesters, and I'll talk a little bit about some of the courses here coming up on the next slide. You can see there at the bottom there, the academic count. If you're ever wondering uh, holidays that we're off or start dates and stuff like that, it's all on the website. I usually just click on the search button on our website and just search calendar and it'll pop right up. But you can see the uh, the link, the um, web address to it right there. Yep, and I'll be oh. sending you this information in an email um, later this week too. So you don't have to take any notes right now, so. So this is our schedule for fall. And as you can see, you will be in class pretty much every day of the week. Um, some of these classes have more of an online component. Every class has an online element to it where the resources and lectures and a lot of the information is online, but you meet face-to-face -face for labs and for synchronous sessions where you're meeting to do interactive face-to-face -face stuff. Um, some of them less so. Our research course, our evidence-based practice is pretty much all online. You do online and then you meet on teams like this to go over some of the concepts in the course. So that's really the only one that you would do like from home. So on Mondays, it's kind of a nice way to start the week because you can kind of wake up, you know, as you're, as you're getting things going, you can attend that class uh, online from home and then you can come to campus for uh, fundamentals of PT practice at 11 o'clock. So you can see that's your Monday schedule there. Uh, you got a little break for lunch and then pathophys and then the pathophys lab, that's Mondays. 
On Tuesdays and Fridays, you're just going to be in one of those two anatomy groups. So you're not going to be in both groups. So everybody will come in the morning to the dark blue um, for, for the lecture portion of anatomy. And then for lab, you're going to be in either group one or group two. Um, and, and those are going to be oftentimes at St. Norbert's College for the cadaver portion. We lease space in their cadaver lab, and we've actually hired the medical college of Wisconsin anatomy faculty member to run that lab for you. You're going to love her. She's an amazing teacher. Dr. Deborah Anderson, who's been doing this for like over 25 years, uh, a, a skilled dissector, skilled anatomist. Um, I think, what do you call him? Anatomist? An anatomist? Um, mm -hmm. And she is, that course is co-taught with a physical therapist who is also a, a really good expert in anatomy. So it's really neat having the two of them together. And we got a bunch of lab faculty that are in there with you, clinicians who are going to be in there with you. So that lab will either be on campus sometimes. We'll tell you when. Sometimes on campus, on our campus, to use the models to kind of prep. And then sometimes you go to St. Norbert's for the cadaver portion. Uh, and it's the same deal on Fridays. And then the only other thing that's kind of interesting there is on Thursdays, you'll be out in the clinic. So you're going to either be in group one or group two, and you're going to be going and traveling to one of our clinical partnership sites where you're actually going to learn in the clinic from some of our uh, lab faculty there. Yep, and all of those sites are within a 30 mile drive. And a lot of times if you if you do get assigned a clinic that is a drive, then probably next semester you'll have a local one. So we try to mix that up a little bit. So just to reiterate, you'll you'll the light blue times you'll either be in group one or group two and then the light green on thursdays you'll be in group one or group two not both so so this is the rest of the curriculum i'm not going to bore you with this right now but just tell you thirty thousand foot view you're going to be in on campus in class for the whole first year and every single third not every single but on thursdays you will go out to the clinic for that ICE experience. So every single semester for the first year, the first three semesters, you will have one course that has that ICE learning experience. And that has been really, really uh, fun. Our, 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 the feedback we've gotten from those experiences has been really good. So it's really nice for you to get out to the clinic. You know, you learned all about shoulder anatomy on Monday, on Tuesday in, in anatomy class. And on Thursday, you get to evaluate somebody's shoulder and you get to do different things. So those are kind of structured. You're going to go there with specific goals. OK, today I have to take vital signs on a specific patient and I have to go over the way that we did vital signs in lab. I'm going to do them on this real live patient. Um, but that's a really good experience. So therapeutic interventions, one in the in the um, in the spring semester and then in the summer, it's uh, therapeutic interventions too. Those are the ICE courses and in, in those where they have that extra lab component in the clinic. Um, I'll, I'll get into a second, but at the end of that summer, at the end of, um, sorry, at the end of the spring, the beginning of the summer, I'm gonna take a comp exam. So all those classes we talked about in first semester that you're gonna take in the fall, the classes in spring semester that you're gonna take in the spring, you're then gonna have a summative comp exam when you come back in the summer. We're very proud to say our first group had a 100% first time pass rate on that comp exam. So it's doable. We prepare you for it. We go over review, a lot of stuff, but you do need to kind of be studying all along and retaining all that information so that you can pass that comprehensive exam. Then you'll do another one in the fall again. So these, what our, our goal there is to train you and prepare you for the board exam. We don't want you to get through our whole curriculum and then all of a sudden be surprised by this board exam. You'd be surprised how many students get through PT school and then can't pass the board exam. It does happen. Not a lot, but it happens. A couple percent uh, of a given um, school you know, won't pass the boards, at least not on the first time. And uh, we don't want that to happen to you. So we're going to train you all along to take those style tests, to take those style, be good at answering those type of questions, and, and then get you ready. And then, um, as you know, then in the fall, you'll be back on campus for courses and you'll go out on your first internship. So... Um, we believe in this kind of back and forth model where you're on campus, you're learning a lot, then you go out to the clinic and you do your internship and you practice it. Then you come back to campus, you learn a little bit, then you go back out. So it's like a back and forth kind of thing, which is a really nice way to learn. Um, and then at the end, that's kind of how it works, right? So then you, you come back in that second summer, you're out on internship, this time for 12 weeks. You can do those in a variety of different places. You can do those throughout different locations throughout the state. You can go to the southeast, you can go to the west coast, you can go to the northeast. 
Um, we have a lot of different options for you there, but if you want to go somewhere far away, but, um, but it's a 12 week internship, then you come back to campus again for that whole fall for all those courses more advanced training, then go back out again to the internship at the end. A lot of schools don't do it that way. A lot of schools just have you on internship for the whole end of the program. For the last two or three semesters, you're just on internships the whole time. It's not a great way to learn because by that time, you're kind of setting your ways and you sort of get in a rhythm of, of doing things in the clinic. It's really nice to come back to campus, get it more advanced in your learning, and then go back out again. So I talked about those mid-curricular exams. You're gonna take two of them. They're each 100 question exams. You're gonna take one in the, at the end of, um, at the beginning of the third semester and one at the beginning of the fourth semester. And then the other cool thing that we're gonna do is you have this big capstone project that you're gonna do. And you're gonna start working through this idea in the first year, but then you'll actually implement it in the second year of the program. You'll write it up, you'll present it either at a conference, you could present it on social media. You could present it during our college research day. But, but this is going to be like a big overarching uh, program. So like Brazilian jiu-jitsu is your thing, right? That's what you're passionate about. You can do your capstone on the physical therapist treating patients in a Brazilian jiu-jitsu tournament. You know, like I, I can think of a really good relationship I have of a, of a guy who is an athletic trainer, a physical therapist, and that's like his main job is he sees people in, in, in that uh, setting and he goes to these big tournaments and he kind of helps manage injuries and stuff like that. That could be your capstone. That, if that's your thing, you know, that could be your capstone. Rock climbing. Capstone could be using rock climbing to help people rehabilitate from, you know, a given injury, right? And, and so it, we really want these capstones to be in your passion area. Uh, we have a lot of opportunities. If you don't have any ideas, we've got a lot of opportunities between our, our uh, clinic that we have, between the relationship we have with the YMCA, a lot of different um, community members that we serve where you could do your capstone on a variety of different topics. And then the last thing there is the faculty coach. You're going to have one of us is going to be your coach. And through the whole time you're with us, that's going to be kind of like your mentor, the person that you go to when times are tough, when you need help. We need to talk to somebody. They're going to be able to give you advice. They're going to help you with the curriculum. That's that's your person. That's really going to help you the whole time. So um, each of you will be assigned to that faculty coach. You're going to first meet that person on that orientation day, that first on-campus orientation day towards the end of August. You're going to have lunch with your faculty coach. You're going to work out with your faculty coach. You're probably going to be on the same kickball team as your faculty coach, and that'll kind of kick off the relationship. And then the way we do is we meet every semester you get to meet with your coach every semester check in see how you're doing go over everything you know how's your mental health how's your wellness i'm constantly asking my, my people that i coach i'm like what's your 5k time right now how many push-ups can you do in a minute like we're talking about exercise stuff all the time i want to see them reach their goals for exercise and health and fitness and wellness um and so and and all sorts of other things you know we, we're, we're here to help you that's the big thing with the coach all right so um you um hopefully have re you may you hopefully have received um instructions to access your bell and college email account um i know some of you have because you've responded to me and you've accepted um in the in those emails you should have received instructions of how to register um i will be sending this um this later this week so I'll be sending you a big email to your Bell and College email by the end of the week is my goal. And it will have a link to the recording of tonight's session. It's going to have a, a checklist for you of things that you can start getting ready. Um, I call it my pre-launch checklist that you can get ready um, for DPT school. Um, and then um, it'll on that will be, you can register for your classes and it has what classes you need to register for. And there's a video of how to to do it. Um, it's pretty intuitive, um, but you go to mybellincollege.edu, um, you hit the student portal and um, and we'll go from there. So like I said here, instructions will be sent out um, with the recording of the meeting. Um, along with that, we have a virtual bookstore at Bellin College. Um, so this is where you will log into the bookstore to see what books are required um, what are recommended and what are optional. Um, so you'll have that. You do not need to purchase the books from the bookstore. You can if you wish, but you can also take that information and then buy the books wherever you need. You will need the books from day one. Um, so again, please prepare for that. 
Um, and I know we had a couple students last year that, you know, were trying to get them at the last minute. Um, I know that this service does offer book rentals. Um, so that that's an option as well. But again, you don't need to purchase the books through here, but you will need to go to log in um, in order to see what books we use. Um, the nice thing about Bell and College is you will get one username. It will be your la your first name and dot last name. So mine is John dot Weiss. That's my username for all of the different um, to register, to get into Canvas, to get into your email, it's all the same thing. And you'll also have one password and we that password works for all of these different programs. So that's really nice. So that's coming. If you have any questions about paying your tuition or any financial aid outcomes, you want to talk to these two people. Um, they are they are waiting for your calls and, and very willing to help out. And um, they're, they're just great people. The DPT students have told me how um, nice they are to work with. So if you, the bursar, it has to do with all the, the billing and paying of tuition. And then if you have any financial aid questions, um, Lena is a great resource. Now I'll turn it over to Ann, who's going to talk to you just short, uh, briefly about the clinical compliance and resource course. All right. So um, part of your um, experiences um, when you're out on your ICE or your clinical, um, you will have to do some compliance items uh, for the areas. Um, so through the learning management system, our Canvas, um, I have created this compliance course and you'll be assigned various different assignments throughout your time here at Belling College. Um, I ask that you um, make sure that you go in there and you uh, take a look at it and then you complete those assignments by the deadline or the timeline that um, I do have. Um, so uh, we belong to um, a Greater Green Bay Healthcare Alliance, um, which has some various different modules and things. And those um, items need to be completed, um, reviewed annually. So you, you'll be getting those assignments as well. Um, also, if you're placed in um, a different, um, you know, clinical setting um, out of the area, there may be some items that you may need to complete as well. So I will either assign them through this course or may uh, send them to you directly. Um, there are a lot of our agencies are also uh, going with an online request and document um, uploading system where you may be required to enroll in that system as well as you may have to upload your records or complete some viewing of modules there as well. So as those come out, come up during your time, um, you'll receive notices of how to complete that item. So uh, next, at the next orientation, Leah will address um, the health records compliance items. So we work together, uh, Leah and I, to make sure that you're compliant, um, that you have all of your requirements that you uh, will need to be um, for all of your clinical experiences. So. Um, my contact information is there in the course. Anytime you have any questions, you can reach out to me. Um, and I am also will be on the campus uh, with you as well. So it's easy to find me. Any, so, any uh, questions on that? Yeah, so most of you are probably fairly familiar with Canvas, which is a learning management system. It's the one that we use at Bellin College. When you log on to there for the first time, you will, before classes start, you're going to have two courses already assigned to you. One will be this clinical compliance and resources course. The other will be your student orientation course. Um, the student orientation is kind of some general Bell and College information that we'll want you to go through. We'll talk about that a little bit more, but this is going to be, um, I believe, Anne, they have access to this course the whole time that they're a student. And so, like I said, you'll need to periodically check back. Anne usually sends an email, hey, go into this course and do this assignment. And if you don't if you aren't aware of this already healthcare is a heavy regulated industry um so if you were to take a job at any sort of larger health system you usually have to get a tb test and you have to prove your vaccinations and all this 
for us to place you as students in these same healthcare entities, we need to show those same documents. So, so that's that's why we're asking for all this information. And then, like Ann said, sometimes um, health systems have special little requests, um, and we and we have to go through and have you review something or or get a, a little bit more information. So yeah, and then also. Um, your next orientation, Amethyst will be here too, um, and she'll explain also on this uh, page is a resource area. So we'll be, um, you'll be able to go on here and then pull any forms, any different types of items or policies that she wants you to make sure um, that you review. So this is live all the time, like John said, um, you can go in and out of this course. Um, but um, again, I want to make sure that you know you'll be in um, you'll be in your first ice experience within the next couple weeks or being the first couple weeks. So you will be receiving an assignment, like John said, when you you'll see that there and you'll be receiving an assignment sometime in July that you'll have to go in and uh, complete that annual review. All right, so um, we'll um, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat. Anne's going to monitor that, but then we'll have time at the end to to open it up for any questions for us. So um, everything else, I'm going to go a little bit rapid fire. This is our dress code for on campus. Um, so it's pretty standard and I kind of tease our current students because I remember the first day and they were all coming in and they looked nice and they were all dressed up and then pretty much after that it's shorts and t-shirts <laughs> all the time. So um, I do want to just make you aware that there will be some labs throughout the course where we do have to expose certain anatomical landmarks. Um, we always want you to be comfortable though. Um, we want to um, respect your privacy and your wishes. So, um, you know, you know, if, if you're comfortable as a male taking your shirt off, that's fine. If you're not, there are gowns available. Um, and um, so um, the women tend to, to use um, a gown, a sports bra, a tank top, um, what have you. And if you have any issues like that, always come and talk to the faculty. You, We do require that you wear standard medical scrubs in anatomy lab. So if you have not purchased those yet, uh, or if you do not have, if you have scrubs already, great, you can use those scrubs. If you don't, um, you'll want to get your hands on some scrubs. Um, they're usually, you can usually find them quite cheap. Um, they're not very expensive. Um, and you don't need anything real fancy because again, you these are in the anatomy lab. Um, they will smell a little bit. <laughs> and um, our students, I think most of them, uh, some of them bought one pair, but some bought two just to have that extra pair as well. Um, so that's up to you, but you will need to wear scrubs when you're in the anatomy lab. When you are out on clinicals, um, we have a little bit more of a strict um, dress code. Um, you'll need to wear your badge. You will need to wear blue or gray pants. You will be given one polo shirt um, on your first day, on your orientation day. Um, that will be suitable for clinical and that works pretty well for the first year. Um, during the second year when you're on clinicals, you might wish to acquire a few more of the polo shirts. And then you can see the kind of the, the um, other um, requirements below. We have several students right now that have tattoos and have um, piercings and, and we've, so we're, we can take care of all that, but we do need to have, um, if you have like the, the forearm tattoo sleeve, like we would need to cover that up. Um, the full clinical dress code, the full, if you wanna, if you want to, if you're having trouble sleeping at night, you wanna read the full um, policy, it is in our clinical education handbook and I'll show, I'll um, share where that is at. Uh, this is a picture of our 2223 handbook that is it's getting updated very soon. Um, this is available on our public website. You'll want to take a look at that. Um, page 49 has our program related essential functions. This is a good resource to look at. This is what you need to be able to do as a student physical therapist. Um, it has to do with cognitive functions. It has to do with motor functions. It has to do with communication, sensory and behaviors. Um, um, and you'll, 
th these are just sort of expectations. If you cannot do these functions, and they're nothing real crazy, um, you 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 won't. Um, it will be very difficult for you to work as a physical therapist. So it's good for you to just review these. They're very basic. Um, we just uh, uh, we just they're basic functions that you need to be able to meet. So I encourage people to just take a look through that. We do require APTA membership. APTA is our national professional organization, is the American Physical Therapy Association. For a student, the cost is $95 per year. There are special, um, special interest groups. Um, most of them are called academies now. They used to be called sections. I should update that. Um, so if you're really interested in orthopedics or sports or geriatrics, or cardiopulmonary issues. There are special sections, or like I said, they're called academies that you can also join. Some of them offer free membership to students. I know we have a student right now that's really interested in geriatrics. The Academy of Geriatric Physical Therapy is a free membership, so she's, she's a member of that. Um, but you will want to join. So you can go to the website and there's a button that says join and, and it should lead you through that. We, so again, membership in the APTA is required. For those of you that are PTAs, um, you can choose, it, it's up to you if you want to continue at the PTA route or at the PT student route. I believe the PT student route is a cheaper way to go. Over the summer, you can actually complete your first class assignment in um, the class I teach, which is called Professional Foundations. Um, I require for you to do this course that is called Preparing Financially for a Physical Therapy Career. It is a 30-minute course. Um, you can go ahead and get that done once you're an APTA member. It is There's no additional charge for that course, but you'll need to go in there, um, complete the course, you will get a certificate, and then I think it's the first or second week of school, you'll need to upload that certificate. Um, like Dr. Chacona said, you are gonna be very busy right away. We start, we literally hit the ground running um, and you're gonna wanna have all of this stuff taken care of ahead of time. So it's off your plate and you can, you can move on. Also, um, there, I, when I said there would be two classes in, in your Canvas dashboard, I lied, I guess, there will actually be three classes in your Canvas dashboard. At Bellin College, we have a Student Success Center, and what they have done is put together this free, optional, self-paced course for you called GPASS, or Graduate Pathway for Academic Student Success. It contains a lot of resources for you um, that you can look through to help prepare you for graduate studies. We had several students that struggled this year in the transition from undergraduate to graduate. Um, probably the biggest um, thing I see is Undergraduate, you may have had a lot of classes where everything was handed to you and it, you said, here, you've got to learn it. That isn't the case in graduate school. We will, we will provide you guidance, <clears throat> but there will be some self-determined learning where you, you will need to show initiative and show the motivation to learn a few things on your own, to do some searching, to do some researching, and then um, come back and report um, what you found and what you've learned. This course will help you do it. Also, time management is critical. Um, have a plan and this course will help you develop that plan. This course will also be available throughout your whole time as a student. Um, you can go through there and see the topics that are listed. You may feel that you're very strong on a couple topics, so go ahead and you can pick like maybe topic three and topic four and, and really dive into that wherever you feel you may struggle or you feel your weakness. But I cannot emphasize enough, be ready. Um, the, the best prepared you're, um, the more prepared you will, you have you you are um, the better experience you're going to have as a student. Um, I do invite you to join our Bellin College um, Facebook group. I know Facebook is kind of going out. Um, I know it's old school in a way, um, but it's one of our. It's probably the one um, platform that where most people are on. If you aren't on it, that's okay. But this may be just a way for you to get to all know each other. If you have. Um, 
uh, questions. There are a few members already that are part of the current cohort. Um, they'd like to share some information with you, but I would encourage you to go ahead and, and join that. Um, when, what happens is you'll go on and you will request an invite and then we'll approve you. Um, it's weird, we did it last year and we, we still had people, random people that had no business um, trying to get in the group, try to get in. So I try to, I keep it as a private group. Um, but you should be able to, you should be able to search Bell and College DPT class of 2026. Otherwise I'll have the link um, in the resources that I send you in the email. Um, there is a class of 2020, 25 um, for the current um, Facebook, uh, for the current cohort at Bellin College, but we created this one specifically for you. Um, just an accreditation update. Um, really nothing is new since all of you interviewed, but I just like to go through this. Um, we received um, status, we are, we are currently a candidate for accreditation. Because we are a new program, you will be our second course. We will not receive full accreditation until the third year of the program. So it's so all new programs go through a three-year candidate for accreditation. We are currently in that. Um, we are an accredited school. Um, and so really once you have to graduate from an accredited program to be able to sit for the boards. By graduate, by attending Bell and College and graduating from our program, you will have graduated from an accredited physical therapy program. During your second year, um, CAPTI will actually be coming on campus to do another visit. Some of you will actually be involved in that. We'll invite you to meet with the accreditors. It's it's really low key. It's it's no big deal. And then. We are very confident at that time that we will be moved from candidate for accreditation to full accreditation. Um, we already are accredited fully by the Higher Learning Commission. Bell and Col that is the entity that uh, accredits all of Bell and College. Um, so we have two accreditations. Um, so really shouldn't be much of an issue, but if you have any other questions about that, please let us know. All right. Make sure you are checking your Bell and College email address. I have access to your personal emails. Um, we do in Slate, but um, more and more you will need to check. We're not. We won't be sending information to your Gmail or your um, Yahoo or whatever is still people use out there. Um, you will need to check your Bell and College email address um, and. What I'll do after we're done with this is I'll show you on the Bell and College website where um, it's best to um, to access some of those um, emails or uh, the the links to the emails. Sorry, I'm kind of looking around at things right now, so I, I apologize if I'm getting a few words mixed up here. So um, with that, um, I will open this up for questions. We have about 10 minutes, but um, here's um, doc, both myself and Dr. Chaconis um, contact information. If you have any questions after tonight, feel free to reach out. For those of you that are local, um, if you wanted to stop by and, and most many of you interviewed at Bellin College, so you've seen the campus already, so that's great. Um, but if there's any questions or there's anything we can do to help you out, please do not hesitate to ask. Um, so with that, you're gonna see my screen. I'm of, um, does anyone have any questions at all? Any concerns? What is, is there anything keeping you up at night right now? Any, any worries or anything like that? Because we can definitely talk about that as well. A uh, quick question for you. With the clinical um, education, if we had um, a current um, therapist that wanted to be a part of the education process, yeah. could we look more into that and have them? Yes, um, and that happens sort of um, somewhat frequently. So we have a, a fairly extensive roster of clinical education sites. Um, and if, if you have a site in mind, what you will do next, your next orientation meeting, you will meet Dr. Amethyst Messer, who is our 
our coordinator of clinical education. What you would do is meet with her, you would give her the contact information, and then Dr. Messer and Ann usually um, contact that the physical therapist that you're talking about. Um, and um, and we we there's usually a, there's a gr an agreement there's a letter of agreement between the two schools um, and we do want to make sure that it's a quality um, program for you so we we go through a bit of a screening um, but we can definitely set up um, additional clinical education sites for you. Beautiful and is if that was a facility that I had worked for in the past is that like a conflict of interest or can I still it it may be and um I, it. <laughs> yeah, it, it may be and i will um i'm going to defer that question to dr messer um okay and is this liz or julia speaking uh julia okay so what i'm going to do is um i in the email that, or i'll probably um send you a, a specific email julia about that um okay. but i know we've we've had that and there's a there's actually a conflict of interest form um but i'm gonna let dr messer she's the director of that and makes the decisions with that so we'll um okay. we'll uh, we'll give you some more information about that beautiful thank you you bet so i just yeah, wanted to it's, share it's, um, it is a little case by case julie it's not it's not that it can't happen the only reason why it would ever be an issue for us is we fear that the student can get taken advantage of. So sometimes what you have is situations where you work somewhere and then you go back and because they're kind of familiar with you in a certain role, sometimes it's not the same learning experience. So that's the only reason why, but it's not that it can't that's happen. It's fair. just we want to be I, cautious I totally and she'll do that. kind of a, what's that? That's super fair. I, I can yeah. see how that can be a concern. Put you yeah. in the work. But she'll <laughs> vet it. She'll talk to you. She'll talk to them. She, she'll, it's a little bit case by case. So it, it can, ha I don't want to act like it can't happen. It's just, we're trying to protect you is the only thing. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm do you see the website right now? Do you all see that? You see that? Okay. So I just yeah. so this is our bellincollege.edu. Um, this is the um I'll just you'll see the home page. My because I've got so much stuff open, the website's working kind of slow. But um, if you go to this quick links up here, this is really one of the key things you're going to want to look at. This is where you will get access. And like I said, I'm I'm um, it's working a little slow because I've got uh, I don't have the best Internet here. Um, but this is where you will log into your email. This is where you can see the calendar. This is where you can see a director, a directory of all of the staff and faculty at Bellin College. My BC, where you um, will register, is here. Canvas is here. Um, so those of you that already, you know, some of you already may know this, but you can go here and use the same username and password and and, and access some of these um, some of these um, sites. Um, if you needed a password reset, you will have access to Microsoft 365 Suite. Um, so, just wanted to point that out. Um, you can, you are also welcome to explore the rest of the um, the rest of the website under academics. There's a DPT page. Um, I would encourage you to explore the handbook, which is located. Um, so if you scroll down. If you scroll down in this program handbook, physical therapy resources. No, I don't. That's not what I wanted. There we go. Uh, take a look at the handbook and catalog. Um, that's where all of our policies and procedures are. That's where you can really learn about us a little more about the program. So, all right, I'm going to stop sharing. We've got just a few more minutes. Um, any more questions? Oh, yeah. Um, I had a question about the exact dates of like winter break or spring break um I could, I, i've been looking and i i haven't been able to find anything on the internet i um that will be on the on page one 
of the um, PowerPoint that I will send out to you at, by the end of this week. Um, I have, I think, the, the dates for the first four semesters on there. Um, so they're, they're never like absolutely guaranteed because sometimes they can change a little bit, but you'll get a good idea of those dates. Um, the most important one to remember um, now is, is August 24th, which is your on-site orientation, and then the 28th, which is your first day. But that will be available in the email I send later this week. John, gotcha. um, thank you. Also, um, at the orientation on the 24th, they may review um, the registrar or uh, somebody may review. There is a resource available on the website as well that has our academic calendar and it just has all the details about the whole um, academic year. So uh, that that's available too on the website. So um, under those quick links, yeah, take a look at the calendar and it might be available for you there as well. Yeah. One thing, we have 15 trimesters. I'll, I'll warn you right now, we do not have a spring break. Um, so you have, and the reason we did that is we would have had, you would have only had a, you would have had a one week spring break and then a one week between spring and summer. And we thought that you would want the two weeks together. So just so that you know, uh, are aware that there is no spring break. And then I do have a question as well. Um, I know there is a location um, out in Bellevue and then there's also a newer one in De Pere. Are we going to be spending more time at one or the other or both? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so the DPT program is mainly housed at, it's technically Bellevue, but it's very close to De Pere. Um, it's the one, if you're familiar with Green Bay, it's right off 172. It's where you interviewed if you came to campus for an interview. Um, it's on Development Drive. Um, and actually, um, I, there was a picture of it. Um, on that email screen. Um, so you will have um, opportunities. Um, you you will be you will use both campuses. Ninety percent of your time, though, will be spent at the Development Drive campus where the physical therapy program is housed. That's where you will start orientation. Um, on the 24th. Um, thanks, Eric. So Eric um, put the put the address in the chat. Um, so that's where you'll start your day on um, on Thursday for your orientation day. But we will move to the other campus that afternoon, and you'll see the resources that are there. But 90% of the stuff is off the Development Drive campus. That's where my office is. That's where all the that's where the physical therapy department is. Um, but there are some resources at the other college um, that you will use from time to time. Okay. So the one in I think the one in De Pere is the one you're thinking of. Technically, it's Bellevue. That's where you will be most of the time. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right, uh, it's eight o'clock. Um, you can expect an email from um, me by the end of the week. I will stay on though if anyone else has any questions. Otherwise, um, hope to hope that you can join us in a month or so for we're going to do another orientation session number two. Um, again, just to kind of get things rolling here. And so it's not so much on that first day. Um, we just try to spread it out a little bit. So, all right. We'll take care, everybody. Stay cool. Um, looking forward to getting to know all of you much more. Thanks. Have a good one. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, dude. Yep, thank you guys. All right, thanks, Brian. John? Hey, Brian. John, Was there a question, Kasaya? Yes. Um, Hi. I think I received my student login. I was just looking through my email and I couldn't find anything. Okay. Did You're... you send it to my Gmail or? Uh, I am not, I'm, I don't know, I got, I'm not sure if they, they probably send it to whatever um, email you sent, um, whatever you have as kind of a, uh, what you used on your registration. Um, oh, okay. 
I know that your your username will be kasaya.vetter. Um, okay. And then there'll be a link there to change your, your password, of course. Um, they'll give you a one-time password. Um, but I'll, I, I'll check and make sure that that was sent. Um, and um, so I'll, I'll follow up on that. I just, I just wrote uh, a note. Okay. Um, is you. Gmail the one that you tend to um, that you tend to um, monitor? You'll 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 see it if I send you something to your Gmail. Yeah, yeah, okay. that's the one I usually check every day. Okay, so I'll I'll uh, I'll, follow, I'll follow up with you. I'm I'm in Outlook right now, and I just searched your name, and you do have your email address is active now. Kasaya.better at bellencollege.edu. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. So yeah, it exists. Just, it's uh, just how it's you get there. into it. And they should have <laughs> yeah. sent you login information to your other one. But if not, um, we, we can get I, we can get our IT team to resend that. Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. You bet. So let us know if you don't get anything. If you still, by the end of the week, can't get it, then let us know. Yeah. Okay. We'll do. All right. Have a good night. Yeah, you too. Ben, did you have something? Or, I see. I see. Ben. Might be frozen. Yeah, he's probably very locked in. So, all right. All righty. Well, good job. Thank you, sir. Okay. I will. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Then have a good night. Yeah. All right. See you. Bye. Bye.